Hello guys hope you all doing well. In this video, we will explore the world famous and UNESCO certified Great Golconda Fort near to the famous Hyderabad also known as the City of Pearls in India. Let's get into the video to learn about the history of this gigantic fort. Golconda Fort is located in the western part of Hyderabad city, about 9 kilometers from the Hussain Sagar Lake. The outer fort occupies an area of 3 square kilometers, which is 4.8 kilometers long. It was originally known as Mankal, built on a hilltop in 1143. It was originally a mud fort under the reign of Raja of Warangal. Later it was fortified between the 14th and 17th centuries by the Bamani Sultans and then the ruling Qutub Shahi dynasty. Golconda was the principal capital of the Qutub Shahi kings. The inner fort contains ruins of palaces, mosques, and a hilltop pavilion, which rises about 130 meters high and gives a bird's eye view of other buildings. It is undoubtedly one of the most magnificent fortress complexes in India. The history of Golconda Fort goes back to the early 13th century when it was ruled by the Kakatiya followed by Qutub Shahi kings, who ruled the region in the 16th and 17th centuries. The fortress rests on a granite hill 120 meters high while huge crenellated ramparts surround this structure. It was initially called Shepherd's Hill, meaning Golla Konda in Telugu while according to legend, on this rocky hill a shepherd boy had come across an idol, and the information was conveyed to the ruling Kakatiya king at that time. The king constructed a mud fort around this holy spot and after 200 years, Bahamani rulers took possession of the place. Later the Qutub Shahi kings converted this into a massive granite fort extending 5 kilometers in circumference. The fort is considered a mute witness to historic events. The Qutub Shahi's reign at Golconda ended in 1687 when it was run over by Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb, who intentionally left it in ruins. The fort is known for its impressive architecture and is a testament to Hyderabad's rich history. Beyond the outer wall, there's a double wall around the base of the hill. 
Inside this double wall, there's a third wall that winds up the mountain. In 1724 AD, an extension of the outer wall enclosed a small area on the northeast, now called Nayakila. Golconda was a well-planned town within the fort, famous in the medieval world for its extensive trade in gems and diamonds, as foreign travelers like Marco Polo noted. The fort features armories, mosques, granaries, reservoirs, and audience chambers in its higher areas. At the foot of the citadel are the residences of the queens, princesses, and their retainers. It is one of the most famous and the biggest fortress in the Deccan Plateau and was built on a 400 feet high hill. It has three lines of massive fortification walls one within the other and rises to a height of over 12 meters. The outermost wall was provided with a deep moat all around covering a vast area of the town with a circumference of 7 kilometers. It has eight imposing gateways and is buttressed with 87 bastions rising to a height of 15 to 18 meters. Each of these bastions was surmounted by cannons of varying caliber rendering the fort impregnable and strong among the forts of the medieval Deccan. After the outer wall, it has also a double wall that runs around the foot of the hill on which the citadel stands. Within the double wall, winding further up the hill, Connecting the natural boulders with masonry walls is a third wall. An extension of the outer wall was made to enclose a small area on the northeast of the town in 1724 AD, which is now known as Nayakila. The well-planned township of Golconda located within the fort was one of the splendid cities famous during the medieval world for its extensive trade in gems and diamonds as attested to by foreigners like Marco Polo, an Italian traveler. The fort has a striking appearance and its higher area is covered with the remains of armories, magazines, mosques, granaries, reservoirs, and audience chambers, while at the foot of the citadel are nestled the dwellings of the queens and princesses and homesteads of their retainers.
The fort has an ingeniously evolved water supply system. The water raised by Persian wheels was stored in overhead tanks at different levels. Water thus collected was effectively distributed to various mahels, other apartments, roof gardens, and fountains in the citadel through stone aqueducts and a network of earthen pipes by sheer force of gravity. The important structures inside the citadel or Balahiza are the imposing Silai Khana, Nagina Bagh, Guard Lines, Akana Madana Offices, Ramdas Jail, Darbar Hall, Ruins of Amba Khana, Baradari on the summit, an inner cordon wall, and a masjid raised by Ibrahim Qutub Shah built between 1550 to 1580 AD. The East Gateway is the only entrance to the citadel and it is one of the biggest gates in the entire fort. A remarkable signaling device had been incorporated in the construction of Golconda Fort. The various edifices are so placed as to transmit sound to different faraway points. If one stands at the center of the entrance portal and claps the sound is deflected by the opposite building, which is constructed at an angle to the entrance. Similarly, if a clapping sound is made from the opposite building, it will be carried to the hilltop, although at the other close points, it may not be heard. It is believed that this was deliberately contrived to convey a message to the guards posted on the roof of Darbar Hall regarding the visiting dignitaries. The other buildings found inside the fort are Habshi Kamans, Ashla Khana, Taramati Mosque, Camel Stable, Private Chambers, Mochuari Bath, Nagina Bagh, Ramashasas Kotha, Darbar Hall, Amba Khana, etc. Golconda is famed for its diamond mines, which yielded legendary gems like the Koh i Noor, Blue Hope, and Daria A Noor. For 62 years, the first three could be Shahi Sultans developed the mud fort into the present architecture, a gigantic granite stronghold stretching over 5 kilometers. The Golconda was initially called Mankal, and Kakatiyas, a South Indian dynasty, established it in 1143. It is said that a shepherd kid discovered an idol of a deity at the location when Kakatiyas were constructing the fort. That is why it is known as Golla Konda or Shepherd's Hill. Rani Rudrama Devi and her successor Prataparadra rebuilt the fort. Later, the fort fell under the Kama Naika, 
who fought the Tughlaqi army and prevented them from conquering Guarangal. It was given to the Bahamani sultans by Kama King Musunuri Kapai Naika in 1364. Bahamani sultans gradually surpassed Golconda in power. Finally, Sultan Kuli Kutbi Ulmulk was appointed governor of Golconda in 1501 and built the city as the center of authority. During this time, the Bahamani Sultanate collapsed progressively, and in 1538, Sultan Kuli formed the Kutbi Shahi dynasty. The Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb laid siege to the fort in 1687, bringing the Kutbi Shahi Bye. dynasty to an end. It had been an eight-month siege. Then, finally, he led his troops to take the Golconda fort. Aurangzeb and his army had already defeated two Muslim kingdoms, the Nizam Shahi of Ahmednagar and the Adil Shahi of Bijapur. The Mughal army was bound to attack the Golconda fort at some point. It took eight months to capture the Golconda. It had pushed the Mughal army to its breaking point on several occasions. At that time, Golconda fort was the most impregnable fortress on the Indian subcontinent. However, Aurangzeb and the Mughals eventually entered the fort through a deceptive triumph, and the Golconda led to its eventual fall from greatness. Aurangzeb was dubbed a mean-minded coward. The fort's gardens were noted for their wonderful scent, but after over 400 years, they may have lost their aroma, but you may still discover their rich history. The Archaeological Survey of India listed Golconda Fort as an archaeological treasure on its list of monuments. This fort comprises four different regiments connected by a 10-kilometer long wall adorned with 87 semicircular bastions armed with cannons, eight entrances, and four drawbridges. There were various royal rooms, halls, temples, mosques, stables, and other structures within the fort. The primary entrance to the fort from the east is Bala Hissar Gate. The door is framed by a pointed arch and rows of scrollwork. A peacock with elaborate tails adorns the entryway. The peacock pattern is derived from Hindu architecture, explaining the fort's Hindu origins. Visitors to the fort may marvel at the architectural splendor of the pavilions, entrances, gateways, fortifications, and even the stables. The entire fort complex spans 11 kilometers and illustrates the difficult labor. The fort's sound system is well known. The fort's lowest point may be felt near Fateh Darwaza or the Victory Gate. A hand clap may be heard at the Bala Hissar Pavilion, the highest point a kilometer distant, at a specific moment below the dome. In an assault, it was used as a warning message to the Sultan. A cotton weaving business at Golconda produced vast amounts of high-quality plain or patterned garments for home and foreign markets in the 17th century. The textile was mainly built for Muslims and shipped to Persia, Java, Sumatra, and European nations. However, Golconda was most renowned for its diamond mines. The Kolur mine was the first to be discovered in the southeast. Later, in the Krishna district, the Atka. Both were found under the reign of Kakatiyas. At the time, they were the world's only found diamond mines. Golconda was known for its diamond market and diamonds extracted from several mines. The Golconda diamonds were the name given to the diamonds. Many famous diamonds have come from Golconda, including the Ko I Noor, Darir A. Noor, Hope Diamond, Noor Ul Ain, Olov, Nizam, Jacob, and some lost jewels such as the Florentine Yellow, Akbar Shah, and Great Mogul. The Indian permanent delegation to UNESCO proposed the fort for nomination as a World Heritage Site.
Golconda still boasts mounted cannons, four drawbridges, eight gateways, majestic halls, magazines, stables, etc. The outermost enclosure is called Fateh Darwaza meaning Victory Gate, after Aurangzeb's army marched successfully through this gate. At Fateh Darwaza, one can witness fantastic acoustical effects, which is one of the many famous engineering marvels at Golconda. Clapping your hand at a certain point near the dome entrance reverberates which is heard clearly at the hilltop pavilion, almost one kilometer away. This served as a warning note to the inhabitants of the fort of any impending danger, of course, it now amuses visitors. The fort gains an impressive place among the architectural marvels and heritage structures of India and is a testimony to Hyderabad's glorious past.